know we'll see no more beer in the ready room. That this is a, an unusual occasion. Interesting facts about famous people. John Wayne's best war movies. Primarily known for his western movies, however, Wayne also made many war movies. These are his best. Wayne was a Hollywood icon, so dominating he defined two American film genres, westerns and war films. Few approach the charisma and screen presence of Wayne, the embodiment of America and masculinity for nearly 50 years. Of more than 150 films Wayne made in his career, just over a dozen of them were war films. He remains a war movie icon, as most of these films were hits and classic movies that still stand out all these years after his death. Today we will take a look at the best war films from the Duke. If you like this video, take a look at my channel for many more. The link is in the description. Apologies as always for any mispronunciation of names. The Green Berets, 1968. One of his most controversial films. The Green Berets was an attempt to change public opinion about the Vietnam War. However, Wayne took the same approach to the Vietnam War as he did to his World War II films. But that didn't fly in an America where public opinion was already against the war, following the Tet Offensive and news of war atrocities. Wayne, who co-directed the film, took a heavy-handed patriotic approach to the story. But critics ravaged the film for his attempt to take the high moral ground. Operation Pacific, 1951. From the director George Wagner, has John Wayne playing the exo of an American submarine when tragedy strikes the crew. Racked with guilt, Wayne must pull it together when faced with a dangerous mission. This may not be the most realistic submarine movie, however it's entertaining. Wayne and good friend, Ward Bond, playing the sub-captain, have great chemistry as usual, having made 23 films together, including The Searchers and The Quiet Man. They are joined by Patricia Neal as Wayne's love interest in the film. Critics didn't like the film, but it's a crowd pleaser that's still worth watching. Flying Leathernecks, 1951. Wayne and sometimes co-star Robert Ryan play marine pilots in Flying Leathernecks. Their dynamic the gives the film a fascinating angle. Wayne plays like Major wedding. Daniel Kirby, trying to whip his squadron pilots into shape well, as they prepare for battle. Ryan plays Captain horse. Carl Griffin, Kirby's soft-hearted second-in-command, playing good cop to Kirby's bad cop. Their for. clash of personalities has consequences, as the pilots air. learn the real cost of going Could into battle unprepared. The film is one of two John Wayne films produced by Howard Hughes Production Company, with the other being Jet Pilot. Highlighting Hughes' fascination with aviation, Wayne is on record as saying Jet Pilot was his worst movie. Back to Bataan, 1945, a fantastic, untraditional World War II film, with Wayne playing a colonel organising a guerrilla resistance in the Philippines after the Japanese invaded. Wayne stars with Anthony Quinn playing a Filipino native helping to organise the locals against the Japanese. Lawrence Tierney appears in a supporting role. This film is a favourite with World War II film fans. The movie was filmed near the end of the war. General Douglas MacArthur famously took back the Philippines while production was still going, requiring changes to the film's story. Flying Tigers, 1942. Wayne's first World War II film. Wayne had technically appeared in a couple of films set during the war, most notably John Ford's The Long Voyage Home in 1940, but this was his first combat film. Wayne plays the leader of a squadron of volunteer fighter pilots defending China from Japan, and the film boasts some great dogfight sequences. Thanks to excellent model work and fast-paced editing, the film earned three Oscar nominations for sound, special effects and music. The Longest Day, 1962. Some don't consider The Longest Day a John Wayne film, as they call his role a cameo. A valid argument, as the film is an ensemble piece, featuring over two dozen high-profile stars, including Richard Burton, Henry Fonda, Robert Mitchum, Sean Connery, Red Buttons, Robert Ryan, 
Peter Lawford and Roddy McDowell. Wayne's screen time is limited, but one of the larger roles in the film, chronicling the D-Day invasion from both sides. His part in the film is pivotal, evidenced by his separate listing in the film credits as and John Wayne. Romanticises war at times. Overall, the film is excellent, with attention given to historic details. All the actors get a chance to shine. Richard Burton, in particular, has some great scenes. Nominated for five Academy Awards, including Best Picture, it won two for Best Cinematography and Best Special Effects. In Harm's Way, 1965, Oscar-nominated director Otto Preminger took on the Pearl Harbor attack in 1965's In Harm's Way. Wayne stars as Captain Rockwell Torrey, who gets his chance at revenge after his ship is attacked at Pearl Harbor. The attack on Pearl, in the film's first act, is an impressive battle sequence with energy and urgency, although some unconvincing model work holds back some of the sea battles. The second act is heavy in melodrama, with everyone from Wayne to co-stars Kirk Douglas and Tom Tyrone getting romantic subplots. The third act features an entertaining naval battle to close the film, nominated for an Oscar for Best Cinematography, and listen for Jerry Goldsmith's impressive score, which is similar to his score for Planet of the Apes three years later. The Fighting Seabees, 1944. The Fighting Seabees dramatises the real-life creation of militarised construction crews during World War II. Wayne plays a civilian civil engineer working in the Pacific Theatre, whose men cannot carry weapons, endure multiple attacks from Japanese soldiers. He advocates for the creation of construction battalions, Seabees. The film chronicles the early efforts of Seabees as they came to be known, a side of the war rarely depicted in film. The film shows the harsh realities of war, rare for the time. Wayne is suited in a role that requires more character development than the average war film. They Were Expendable, 1945, a John Ford directed film, often forgotten amongst his other collaborations with Wayne, particularly because their westerns are so iconic. This film, a solemn film, is one in which Wayne is actually billed second to the fantastic Robert Montgomery playing the PT boat captain in the Pacific. Montgomery himself, who was an actual PT boat well. commander prior to making the film. They Were Expendable also the features one of the most emotional scenes me. Wayne ever filmed. During a makeshift funeral, after lies, several characters are killed in battle, Wayne, on the verge of tears, delivers a line of poetry favoured by one of the fallen the characters. Sea. An amazing performance from an actor and often known for his stoicism kill. in film. Sands of Iwo Jima, 1949, one of the finest World War II films ever made. Sands of Iwo Jima has Wayne playing a hard marine sergeant who is tough on his men, haunted by the memories of past battles. He's determined to get his men ready for war, even if they hate him for his training methods. Sands of Iwo Jima is a fitting tribute to the men who fought there. The last scene has a particularly powerful effect. The film is a favourite not just with Wayne fans, but also fans of military films. Wayne earned his first Best Actor nomination for the film in 1950, not winning, in which he earned an acting nomination nearly every 10 years. He was nominated again in 1961 for The Alamo and again in 1970 for True Grit, the role that finally won him the Oscar. Thank you for your time today. I hope you enjoyed the video. I appreciate likes, shares and subscribers. Don't forget to hit the notification button to get my new videos. Drop me your comments. Bye for now. See you again soon. I told you you'd need this bad someday. Please take time to take a look at my Facebook page for new information.